Hi everybody, this session we will be discussing about app spoofing. So, where do you see app spoofing or where does this concept comes us? In today's world, we, have, we need security because security is a much more demanded sector in nowadays world. Uh, if you see at any particular company, they give much preference for security. So, why do they give preference for security? Because it's the data that matters at the end of the day. So nowadays companies have so many datas and they are not much worried about the infrastructure but they are totally worried only about their data because data pays them. So now when security you take you have uh, three different domains of security information security. We have three different types of security in which one is information security. So I am just going to highlight you the specifications or the use of information security. In information security, you have several domains in which Easy Council is one of the sector. Then next you have is ISE Square. So all these provides information about a data, how the data can be se kept secure inside a LAN network. Now, inside a LAN as well as inside a WAN network. So now I'm just going to give you a brief idea about what is app spoofing inside a LAN network. So now as we all deal with LAN networks we know that say when we uh, when we have a end device or a end PC if the end PC has to communicate with the uh, server outside the LAN network he has to go to go through a gateway. Now the PC will be having the default gateway as a router's IP address and the MAC address will be the router's MAC address and the end device will be there. So now this is an architecture as you can see that you will have a NPC, you will have a router and the other end you will have your web server, web server or anything else you want. Now when the data is, has to go from here, a end device will send an ARP request. So this ARP request has been broadcasted to out to find who has the end device? Say for example, our LAN network is of 10 dot network and the server belongs to 172 dot. See, if my PC has to make a request to 172 dot, he will make a broadcast saying, do you know 172 dot network? So my gateway would reply me back saying that, hey, I know this network. You can use my MAC address as the default gate when you can forward the data to me so that I will forward from my end to the other end. So this is how the process is going on. Now, Imagine on this scenario you have an attacker sitting, say attackers need not to be, uh, to be from an outside network, today's world or today's companies you can see so many disgruntled employees who works against the company sitting inside the company. So it's very hard for you to identify someone like that inside a LAN network. So it is mandatory that not only having an endpoint security device, you should also have an internal security inside your company so you will be able to identify where exactly is the attacker taking revenge of your data. So I'll just come back to the scenario. So I have an NPC over here. He makes an R broadcast. As I said, he'll get a R reply from this. Now, in Easy Council or CEH, we use different types of tools which are de described by uh, several hackers. And when we use those tools to define an attack, we call ourselves as script KDs. So I'll just give you a small idea about what are the tools used inside our spoofing. You can use DSNF, you can use Ethercap, you can use app spoofing. So I'll just be using app spoofing and just show you the MAC address details of it. So my NPC always has an app cache inside which it will always store the content of the router's MAC address. Now imagine I have an attacker over here. This guy is going, is trying to act as a gateway for me. So now he is also a PC inside a LAN network, but he is trying to give, make a broadcast to me saying that I am the default gateway towards the LAN network. So my device, when it gets a, re a broadcast message, he doesn't have the capability to check whether is it exactly correct or not. So my device would exactly believe what the other guys say. So that attacker when he sends a R message, you call it to be gracious R. So he will keep on sending gracious R towards my PC. So my PC will receive and understand that 
attacker MAC address has now become my default gateways. So now on my data, on my app table MAC uh, app cache, my entry will be marked with 10.1.1.10's MAC address as attacker's MAC address. So the IP will be the default gateway's IP address, but the MAC address would be the attacker's MAC address. So now when I am sending a data now, I can do it through app spoof. So when I am sending a data, the data will exactly go to L2, uh, sorry, the attacker's MAC address. So how will the data go to attacker's MAC address? Because we have an in-between device which is used for communication is called as a switch. So switch will only work based on MAC address and switch is vulnerable to app spoofing. So now switch is a device which can only forward the frames. So he will forward the frames. When I am going to send a data, he will forward it to the attacker. The attacker will receive the data and the attacker will edit and he can do as much as editing he wants and he can forward it through the gateway. So now I will not be aware of where the data is going, I will only be at the day end, of, end of the day aware that hey, I am getting a service from the service provider whichever I have a request or I am getting a reply from the Google server or what. So at the end of the day, I will be saying that I got this page, I got this data. But do you know how exactly is the packet flowing? Is it exactly going from your PC to the server or someone else managing your data? So now when the attacker comes into the picture, you call this attack to be a man in the middle attack. So every data which goes from the PC towards the server will go through the attacker's PC whereas he will be able to see the whole data which is accessible from you towards the end. So this is a bit of app spoofing which you might be familiar with which you might have understood it now. So hope this would have brought you a good informative idea about what is the security future running and what are the security criteria required for you on a LAN network. So now switch is a vulnerable one. You have to configure the switch because switch doesn't have additional security features. Now when you take a firewall, firewall has security options. When you take a router, router can be configured with security options. But when you take a switch, switch doesn't have any security option. But you can do a dynamic ARP inspection on a switch so that whenever somebody is sending a gracious R, the DIR dynamic ARP inspection will make a request to the DHCP server. So in the DHCP server, you will be having a database which matches the MAC address and the IP address. Once it makes a request, you will identify whether it is a legitimate user or a malicious one. If user, it will block the user. So this dynamic ARP inspection configure, configured on a switch will enable you to protect against the ARP spoofing. So guys, hope you that you have understood what is app spoofing. So there are so many other small attacks which can be done on a LAN network. So DHCP snooping, uh, DHCP starvation, so, so many number of attacks are there which can be uh, attacked towards your network and for your data on a LAN network. So I just, I just want you guys to be aware of all these things. Hope you enjoyed this session. Thank you.